हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू फिजिकल साइंस डिजिटल क्लासेस महबूबाबाद माई सेल्फ नरेंद्र बाबू कोटला पीजीटी केमिस्ट्री टी एस एम एस महबूबाबाद टूडे इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वाटर ऑफ क्रिस्टलाइजेशन रिमूविंग ऑफ वाटर ऑफ क्रिस्टलाइजेशन प्लास्टर ऑफ पैरिस सो वॉट इज वाटर ऑफ क्रिस्टलाइजेशन सो देर आर सम सॉल्स विच कंटेन ए फ्यू वाटर मॉलिक्यूल्स as an essential part of their crystal structure the water molecules which form part of the structure of crystallization so that means uh, so some salts uh, they contains the few water molecules uh, as an essential part of their crystal structure so that means uh, water molecules are uh, so part of their crystal structure generally the salts which contain water of crystallization are called hydrated salts what are hydrated salts the salts which contain water of crystallization are called hydrated salts every hydrated salt has a fixed number of water of crystallization in its one unit formula every hydrated salt has a fixed number of molecules of water of crystallization in its one unit formula that means if you take one unit formula so every hydrated salt that contains a fixed number of the water molecules in it for example cuso4 5h2o what is that cuso4 5h2o which is called copper sulfate pentahydrate in this five water molecules are present second one Na2CO3 10H2O that means sodium carbonate decahydrate deca in the sense 10 in this 10 water molecules are present next CaSO4 2H2O calcium sulfate 2H2O calcium sulfate dihydrate so in this uh, di in the sense 2 water molecules are present so that's why so we can consider it as sodium sulfate dihydrate so fourth one feso4 7h2o iron sulfate heptahydrate hepta in the sense of seven so seven water molecules will be present in this that's why so iron sulfate heptahydrate note water of crystallization is a part of crystal structure of a salt water of crystallization is a part of crystal structure of a salt if you take any of the any one of the hydrated salt in that water molecules are quite common they are part of the crystal structure since water of crystallization is not free waters that means it is not having so in this uh, water molecules are not present as a free water it does not wet the salt means so generally water molecules present in water in the sense most of the members they used to think that uh, so the salt will be wet in nature but these water molecules will be present in as a part or one of the part of the crystal structure water molecules will be present in crystal structure so they not free water molecules that's why they do not wet the salt so they appear to be perfectly dry in nature these hydrated salts also appear to be perfectly dry in nature the water of crystallization gives the crystals of the salts their shape and in some cases imparts them color what is the use of so containing this water molecules in the sense so the water of crystallization gives the crystals of the salts their shape what this water molecules gives means sometimes uh, so they gives the shape to the crystals of the salt and in some cases they imparts the color sometimes because of presence of these water molecules uh, so they imparts them color to the crystals for example cuso4 5h2o is hydrated salt so in this uh, hydrated salt it contains the blue in color why it contains a blue in color in the sense due to the presence of water of crystallization in cuso4 crystals that imparts them a blue color similarly feso4 7h2o means the ferrous sulfate heptahydrate this gives the green color na2co3 10h2o so decahydrate sodium carbonate decahydrate it is white in color caso4 2h2o calcium sulfate so dihydrate this is white in color that means these two are white in color see na2co3 10h2o caso4 2h2o that gives the white in color 
so next one removing of water of crystallization when hydrated salts are heated strongly they lose their water of crystallization so by taking the hydrated salt if you heat them strongly they lose their water of crystallization so by losing their water of crystallization the hydrated salts lose their regular shape and color so by losing water of crystallization the hydrated salts lose their regular shape and color and become colorless powdery substances what we discussed actually presence of the water molecules they gives the so shape to the crystals or sometimes they gives they import the color to the crystal but because of loss of these water molecules by losing the water molecules or water of crystallization the hydrated salts lose their regular shape and color and become colorless powdery substances the salts which have lost their water of crystallization are called anhydrous salts so you have to remember this so if any one of the salt if it loses water molecules from it such salt is called as anhydrous means anhydrous means removed water molecules so hydrated in the sense having the water molecules here anhydrous means removed water molecules from the salt that's why we can call it as anhydrous salt so when water is added to an anhydrous salt it becomes hydrated once again and regains its color what happens here when water adds so when water is added to the anhydrous salt so just we, we heated the salt and it loses the water molecules and it loses the shape and it loses the color of the substance also so in in such cases if you add water molecules to them again so then they regains its color and the shape for example cuso4 5h2o is a salt it is blue in color when cuso4 crystals are heated strongly so they lose all the water of crystallization and form anhydrous cuso4 which is white color when when you heat this when cuso4 crystals are heated strongly they lose all the water molecules of crystallization and form anhydrous cuso4 which is white in color so that means cuso4 simply it forms the cuso4 but the cuso4 is white in color but when water is added to this anhydrous cuso4 it gets hydrated and turns blue due to the formation of hydrated cuso4 again it forms by the addition of the water to this so anhydrous copper sulfate it gets hydrated and turns blue to the that means it turns to blue due to the formation of hydrated cuso4 so for example cuso4 plus 5h2o gives rise cuso4 dot 5h2o it regains the hydrated we will now describe an experiment to show the action of heat on copper sulfate crystals so we will discuss one lab activity so how water molecules loses its color and how they regains its color by by explaining one activity coming to the activity take some cuso4 crystals in a dry boiling tube so actually this uh, crystals they are having the blue in color heat the crystals strongly by keeping boiling tube over the flame what we have to do we have to heat the crystals uh, over the flame so of burner for some time that means heat the crystals strongly by keeping boiling tube over the flame of burner for some time on heating the blue copper sulfate crystals turns white and a powdery substance is formed till now it is a crystalline in uh, structure crystal form and after heating so blue cs4 crystals that turns to the white and it becomes powdery substance we can also see tiny droplets of water in the boiling tube so inside of the boiling tube so we can observe the small water drops so inside of the boiling tube so water drops how they formed in the sense the water of crystallization loses because of heating this copper sulfate cool the boiling tube and add two or three drops of water 
on the white copper sulfate powder formed above the to the above formed copper sulfate white powder copper sulfate add 2 3 drops of water so by the adding of this 2 3 drops of water the blue color of copper sulfate crystals restored and they become blue again so by the addition of the water again they regains the crystals that means they regains the blue in color also the changes in color which takes place on heating blue colored copper sulfate crystals to form white anhydrous CuSO4 and regaining blue color on adding water. Actually the changes in color which takes place on heating blue colored copper sulfate crystals to form white anhydrous CuSO4 and regaining blue color on adding the water. So this is activity. Next important compound that is plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris is calcium sulfate hemihydrate. It is a calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Hemi in the sense half H2O. Formula is CaSO4 half H2O. Formula is CaSO4 half H2O. So coming to the preparation of plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris is prepared from gypsum. What is gypsum? Gypsum is calcium sulfate dihydrate. Gypsum is calcium sulfate dihydrate. That means CaSO4 2H2O. Gypsum is calcium sulfate dihydrate. That means CaSO4 2H2O. Plaster of Paris is prepared by heating gypsum to a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. 100 degrees centigrade in the sense 373 Kelvin. So, when we are heating this gypsum to the 100 degree centigrade, it loses 3 fourth of its water molecules of crystallization and forms plaster of Paris. So, by heating of this gypsum means CaSO4 2H2O on heating to 100 degree centigrade, that means 373 Kelvin, it loses 3 fourth of its water of crystallization and forms plaster of Paris. Okay. So, the temperature maintaining of the temperature is very very important in this case why because uh, so if the temperature uh, so rises more than the 100 degree centigrade or the 373 kelvin temperature if it rises then what happens we will see if gypsum is heated above 100 degree centigrade then all its uh, water of crystallization is eliminated so if you not maintain the proper temperature if the temperature uh, increases or raises more than the 100 degree centigrade then what ha happens all the water of crystallization loses it loses all the water of crystallization so and that will be eliminated and anhydrous calcium sulfate is formed and this is called as dead burnt plaster it is called as dead burnt plaster so, if you maintain the 100 degree centigrade or 373 Kelvin temperature, then it loses only 3 fourths of water. If the temperature rises heated above the 100 degree centigrade, then all of its water of crystallization is eliminated and anhydrous copper sulfate so is formed and this is called as dead burnt plaster. This is the preparation of the plaster of Paris. And what are the uses of uh, this plaster of Paris? We will see. Plaster of Paris used in hospitals for setting fractured bones in the right position to ensure correct heating. So that means the plaster of Paris will be used for setting of the bones, setting of the fractured bones in the hospitals. If any one of the bone so fractured because of some accidents, so they will be corrected. So by using this plaster of Paris, that setting of these bones, this will be used. Second one, it is used in making toys, decorative materials, cheap ornaments, cosmetics, blackboard chalk and casts for statues. Third, it is used as fireproofing materials. Plaster of Paris will be used as fireproofing materials. Fourth one, plaster of Paris used in chemistry laboratories for sealing air gaps in apparatus where air tight arrangement is required. So it is used in laboratories for sealing, for sealing the air gaps in apparatus. So, where airtight arrangement is required. 
so at the same time last one so it is used for making surfaces smooth before painting them for making ornamental designs on the ceiling of houses and other buildings thank you thank you for watching this video